What is going on guys? Stefan at SNE's Garage. Another day in Hyundai land. Today we have a 2017 Hyundai Sonata presenting itself to the shop today with a flashing check engine light and it is in reduced power and or limp mode, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and figure out what's going on with this car. Um, usually when they go into limp mode like this it's for excessive rod bearing clearance and uh, they usually end up needing an engine. Um, so we're going to scan this thing for codes. We're going to see what code we get, and then I'm going to take you on the diagnostic process for this specific issue uh, to figure out if it is, in fact, rod bearings or if it is something simpler, like maybe a knock sensor or uh, maybe just as simple as a software update. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, get this thing you know, plugged in. Let's get it scanning. Let's see what codes we pull. So we have our VCI plugged in, we have our tablet connected, and we are going to go ahead and auto VIN it. So let's pull it down, let it populate the VIN, 17 Sonata with the 2.4 liter. And as we always do, we're going to search all the modules here, because we want a full health check on this car. So let's go ahead and let it run codes. Let's see what we get. I'm betting I get a P1326. For the check engine light, let's see uh, if we're right. Yeah, buddy. So let's go ahead and let it finish scanning, see what else we pull. And uh, we're going to probably end up jumping right into the rod bearing clearance test. So uh, I'll just let it finish scanning. I'll keep the camera pointed on it, see what else we get. Nothing yet. Looks like we have our 1326, and that's probably going to be it. We might have some some silly stuff in history. There's usually history codes on almost any car I scan, just whether it be low battery voltage codes, if the battery's ever died, or simple stuff like that. But it's it's good to get the full picture, especially on these modern cars that have, you know, 15, 20 modules in them. Uh, you want to know if everything can talk to it, you know, each other. And uh, if any of the modules are ratting any other modules out, you know, this that's why you want to get a full workup on the car, more or less. All right, so let's see, let's go back. We have nothing in history. So yeah, all we have is our current active uh, knock sensor code. So let's print this out. Make sure our printer's working. I'm sure it is. Yep. All right. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. I'm gonna go get my uh, bearing clearance tool set up, and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, one thing that I went ahead and checked just for my peace of mind is I went ahead and made sure that this car has the latest software update because we've gone through several revisions of the um, the 1326 update the 953 was what the, the campaign was um, but this car does have the latest version in there so um, we're either going to have to replace an engine or a knock sensor on this car there is no software update that's going to fix this one so uh, let's get the ball rolling so we have our bearing clearance tool over here and the way we need to set this up is I need access to the top of all four pistons. So we need to pull all of our ignition coils out, all of our spark plugs out, and we insert this tube into the, uh, the cylinder and put that dial indicator gauge on there. And we basically apply pressure and vacuum to the piston and we measure our bearing clearance that way. What's up fam? Yeet. So let's go ahead and uh, get these coils and plugs out. We're gonna take it from there. All right, so we got all of our coils out, we got all of our spark plugs out, and we have our rod bearing clearance tool inserted into cylinder number one. So now what we're gonna do is rotate the engine until it's at top dead center of number one, and we're going to start the test. 
So uh, let me find a way to prop the camera up, and I want to get it on camera when I rotate this, and show you how to get it to top dead center, and get it started. Got our air hose connected. We're gonna click the next button. And this is when we get to see what our bearing clearance is at. So if you watch your number here, when I switch it, it should change. So that's our bearing clearance. And it has us do this several times on this cylinder, and then we go to the next. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and do this on the rest of the cylinders here and uh, update you with what we got. So this engine passed the bearing clearance test, uh, so we're probably going to end up putting a knock sensor in this thing. I just have to read up on the TSB, make sure I've done everything that I need to do to condemn the knock sensor. And uh, we're going to take it from there. So give me a few minutes, let me do some reading, and I'll be back with you. Alright guys, back with you here. Uh, unfortunately, this thing is getting a knock sensor. <laughs> we got to take the air dam out. We got to take the air box out. I got to separate the throttle body from the intake manifold. I got to pull the whole intake manifold out because the uh, knock sensor is tucked up under there next to the fuel rail. So let's go ahead and start disassembling. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative terminal. All right, guys. So we're in the middle of our intake manifold removal here. I just wanted to make a point here. Um, Hyundai runs coolant through their throttle body. Um, so to prevent yourself from having to drain the cooling system, just unbolt the throttle body from the uh, intake manifold. That way you can pull the manifold and leave the throttle body in the car. Um, you're gonna have a vacuum line up here to disconnect. You're gonna have two over here. I disconnect it on this side and leave the purge valve connected to the manifold. And you're also going to have to unhook the harness from the manifold. And then you have to disconnect your injector harness and your knock sensor harness from the bracket on the front of the manifold. So now that we're at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of my bolts and nuts that secure the, uh, the intake manifold. We have one, two, three, four, and five. There's one on this side hiding. And then there's a little bracket underneath the intake manifold that also has two 12 millimeter bolts you have to take off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them off. And then uh, I can pull the whole intake manifold off of the car. So just hang tight. All right. We got our intake unbolted. I'm gonna put you down here. We're gonna pull the whole intake manifold out of the car. Now that we got the intake out, you can see the bracket I was talking about with two 12 mils. 
Uh, you can get it from the bottom, but it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, so I usually like to just get that from up top. And uh, here you can see the inside of your intake runners, which is a, a good thing to show you because these cars are GDI engines, so they do not have the advantage of a fuel injector cleaning the ports, so they get very dirty and you should definitely be performing a GDI service on these cars at least every 20,000 miles to keep these valves clean. Uh, but that's not why we're here. So here's that bracket I was talking about and then our knock sensor is up under here underneath the number three fuel injector. You can see it right there behind that clip. So we're gonna have to unplug that injector and then we're gonna remove that knock sensor. And when we install the new one, it is very important that we use a torque wrench and torque it to exactly 15 foot-pounds. So let's go ahead and get this old one out, and uh, I'll get the new one in, and I'll, I'll torque it on video so you can see you know, exactly what I'm doing. So to gain access to this knock sensor, we have to unplug the number three fuel injector, and there's a little clip behind it that we have to unclip. So I'm going to use this little hook tool, because you can't really get it with your fingers, and you're just going to kind of get it behind here and pull down and you'll feel it disengage. And then you should just be able to unplug the injector. So let's work on that. There we go. Okay, we got the injector unplugged. And now we have access to the 12 millimeter bolt that secures the knock sensor. Let's get that out. All right, guys. We got our torque wrench set to 15 foot-pounds. We're gonna get in there. We're gonna torque down this knock sensor and uh, then we're gonna throw the intake manifold back on. Let's get to it. There we go. Our new knock sensor is torqued down. We're going to plug in our fuel injector. Until it clips, we're going to relock the tab we unlocked, and then we're going to route this knock sensor harness away from the fuel injector harness. So the best way to do that is to bring it right over here, like this, and we do not want it to touch the injector harness because it will pick up feedback from that injector harness, and that can cause false knock sensor codes. Um, so let's go ahead and slap our intake manifold back on. The first thing you're going to want to do is start these two bolts before you tighten the ones on the head. Otherwise, you might not be able to get them to line back up. So let's get started. Quick note here, don't forget your fuel injector silencer. These direct injectors are very loud and you will know if you forget to put that in there. So please, don't forget. Alright guys, we got the car all back together, new knock sensors in, manifolds back on, intakes back together, engine covers on. We're just going to auto pin this. We're gonna fault code search again. We're gonna clear any codes that are in there. And then we are going to reset the adaptive values. It's a very important part of this repair. So let me let this scan and we'll be right back with you. So we have no codes, which is an excellent thing. That means that everything's plugged in and everything was done right. So now we're gonna go into software management. Let that load. We're gonna reset the adaptives. Reset adaptive values. Okay. Okay. Reset. Reset. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. There we go. No check engine light. No abnormal engine noises. Everything's all right. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.